The Bald Mamba returned and was a game high plus 18, which helped the injury riddled Bulls take down the steaming hot Cleveland Cavaliers, who had won five straight, coming into Wednesday night's showdown between two of the conference's best teams. The veteran All Stars in Debo and Vooch shot a combined 25 for 25 from the field and youngins in Ayo Dosumu and Kobe White continue to provide excellent scoring support as well. After losing four straight without a ton of their best players, Bulls doubters were arguing the team was in serious trouble, with some saying Nikola Vucevic needed to be traded. Last offseason, it was more of the same, with this time the mainstream media disrespecting the Bulls, as ESPN predicted they'd win 40 games and put them number 19 in their preseason power rankings. Executives and scouts voted DeMar DeRozan was the worst 2021 free agency signing. Plus, highly paid quote-unquote experts were giving takes like this. They have to send Thad Young, El Aminu, and a future first all the way back to the Spurs so they can overpay DeMar DeRozan. You like this more than I did. I did not like this move. I thought it was a huge overpay. After getting out to a multiple game lead in the Eastern Conference, but recently sliding, Here's how the Chicago Bulls are proving doubters wrong yet again. Right quick, only 11.5% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe. Also, leave a thumbs up. It takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops, and I'll follow you back. I left a link in the description for both those platforms. Ever since Chicago assembled this roster with one of my favorite players on it, given he was a four-time All-Star with my hometown Raptors in DeMar DeRozan, I've been a big believer in this Bulls team. That's even an understatement for my regular viewers who've seen the amount of Chicago videos I've made since they picked up DeMar, Lonzo, and Caruso this past summer. But not everyone was a fan of the Bulls' front office, led by GM Mark Eversley, attempting to change the fortunes of their losing ways for the last half decade. We'll get to how one of the most popular NBA media members in Bill Simmons disrespected Chi-Town, but these takes from the final days of ESPN's The Jump aged poorly, and looking back on it, it's pretty hilarious. I think they increased their chances only to a point, though. And George, this is what stuns me. I haven't covered Jerry and Michael Reinsdorf for years and years. That was an ownership group that did not want to go all in to potentially be a, a team that got bounced in the first or second round of the playoffs. Well, guess what they just did? <laughs> they went completely all in on a team that at its highest ceiling maybe, maybe gets to the second round of the postseason. So I'm still surprised. I know Karnasovas and Eversley are trying to do their own thing in that front office, and I know fans are excited. But when I look at that team in comparison to the rest of the East, I just don't think they improve that much where you can start looking at them going, oh, okay, I see them having a legitimate chance to get up to the top of the Eastern Conference. Look, my guy Nick has covered the Bulls for a long time, and he nailed it on the head. The Bulls have gone all in on two sub-all-star 30-year-old guys in Nick Vucevic and DeMar DeRozan to try to keep a guy in Zach Levine who has never been on a winning team, and now it's going to be a free agent in the year and could leave. And I think there's a real chance the Bulls don't even make the play-in tournament. You know, when you talk about this depth in the Eastern Conference, I think they could finish 11th or 12th very easily. They're going to have a terrible defense. And you look at the way this team is built, like, yes, those guys are durable, but I do not see them having any kind of high ceiling. And now they can't trade a draft pick until, what, 2030, 2040? <laughs> I mean, they, they've just put themselves in a box for what? For no high ceiling at all. It's just, it, like Nick said, it's baffling. After all the painstaking rebuild they went to not keep Jimmy Butler, who is, by the way, better than all of these guys they have, it's just really strange what the Bulls have set themselves up with here. The Bulls haven't been the 19th best team in the association like the basketball experts over at ESPN voted them to be in the preseason. Also, based off DeRozan's multiple three-point game winning buzzer beaters and MVP season, he definitely hasn't been the worst pickup of the 2021 free agent class. And today they go all in to get DeMar DeRozan, a guy who we didn't know what his market was. It ends up being 85 million for three years. They have to send Thad Young, uh, El Aminu, and a future first all the way back to the Spurs so they can overpay DeMar DeRozan. You like this more than I did. I did not like this move. I thought it was a huge overpay. I don't understand who they were bidding against. I don't understand why you would want him and Zach Levine on the same team, but you like it more than I did. What did you like about it? I could also see them barely getting into the play-in tournament and maybe even being an 11 seed. I, I think it's a nine seed swing for them. So now you're aware of how the Bulls proved the doubters wrong once, 
And while the second wave of doubters don't come from the mainstream media, based off the fact that Chicago doesn't receive much attention from shows like First Take or Undisputed, this time, it was the team's own fan base coming at the squad's most important players. I usually love the videos from the Inside the Chicago Bulls YouTube channel, I recommend you subscribe to him, but I just felt this individual take on the first seeded Bulls most important rebounder and floor spacer and my boy Vooch was a bit of a reactionary take after the completely injured Bulls dropped their fourth straight game. I just don't know how much more, like how, how long is, is this going to take for Vooch to finally get out of this quote unquote slump or whatever. I mean, it's been more than about 40 games almost and he's still been struggling, man. I don't know what's going on with him. I mean, he just played a terrible game against the Memphis Grizzlies. I mean, Bleach Report even just put out this article just the other day naming every NBA team's worst contract for this season. And obviously they did list Nikola Vooch as the Bulls worst contract and Vooch has been solid here and there he's been very up and down it does surprise me how many easy shots he has been missing just easy shots and easy layups that he used to hit you know he is on pace to become the first center in the NBA to attempt at least 400 shots in a season with a true shooting percentage under 50 percent since he did the same thing back in 2016 and 2017 that's just a stat that you do not want your name to be included it definitely sucks because i feel like vooch should be scoring more and shooting the ball better especially playing with demar and zach it just doesn't make sense i mean he just played terribly against memphis and he shot two of 13 one of five from three point range he only had seven points and 10 rebounds vooch is getting up there in age but i don't know man i really don't know what the problem is with him but Vucevic was out to prove that take wrong, I guess, lighting up top defensive big men like Jared Allen and Evan Mobley to the tune of 24 points, 12 rebounds, making 11 of his 21 attempts from the field. While the Inside the Chicago Bulls channel's point about Nikola's historically bad true shooting at the five spot is valid, given it's one of the most important advanced stats, you can't forget Vucevic's playing style has him attempting shots that most centers don't even think about taking. Nikola's frequency from three to 10 feet is higher than his rim frequency, which is something the majority of centers can't say for themselves. I understand Bulls fans' frustration given Vooch's inconsistent production, combined with his defensive rotations being somewhat lackluster at times, but the lack of playmaking without Lonzo, Levine, and previously Caruso to create shots for him, that definitely had an impact on Nikola's quality of looks. Meanwhile, on the other end of the floor, GM Mark Eversley was well aware before acquiring Vooch last trade deadline that he was no Draymond-esque safety on defense. However, Nikola's valuable floor spacing opens up every driving opportunity or even isolation play that Chicago gets. Even when Vooch isn't hitting jumpers, his three-point volume and reputation of being a premier stretch big in the first place draws his defender over, which is almost always another center moving out of the paint and out to the perimeter, and that opens up clear rim routes for attacking Chicago guards. I saw a ton of fans in the comments section of that Inside the Bulls video calling out Nikola's defense, which I also thought was short-sighted. Sure, Nikola can get caught on an island sometimes and isn't the most switchable big in the world, as I just said, but people forget what was previously making Chicago a stable defensive team, which was Alex Caruso. The GOAT's defensive awareness across the whole court allows Chicago to get away with a whole lot. Without the bald Mamba, who just missed 14 consecutive games and has missed 16 in total on the year, Chicago's defensive rating is 115.5, which ranks them dead last in the association, directly behind the Atlanta Hawks. Conversely, with Caruso, the team's 108.8 defensive rating would put them right behind the Memphis Grizzlies and Milwaukee Bucks as the number 9 ranked squad, and it's the pristine lateral quickness, thunderous athleticism, and utterly special will to win which makes Alex Caruso an incredibly valuable defender, and it's time the man finally gets the respect he deserves in the NBA universe by making his first career all-defensive team in 2022. The greatest player of all time made his return on Wednesday night, and while he shot just two for eight from the fields and one of four from deep, Caruso's locomotive-esque defense swung the momentum as he had the highest plus-minus among all players between the Bulls and Cavs. In terms of the collective bounce-back performance on Madison Street, Debo had an exceptionally efficient night. I mentioned Nicola and Caruso's performance, but it was the rookie Ayo Dosumu continuing to shock the world 
which was the biggest story. In Chicago's last three games, Dosumu started each one and averaged 18 points, 8 assists, 5.7 rebounds, and 2 steals on insane shooting splits of 76.7% shooting, including 70% on three-pointers. Somehow, Io's a rook and putting up absolutely unheard of numbers for a number one seed in the NBA. Io's vet DeRozan spoke about him after last night's W, saying, For him to be on a great team, for one, the presence that he brings, you wouldn't think he's a rookie. You've got to be special to carry yourself that type of way. It's not in an arrogant way because he's one of those guys that's inquisitive, always asking questions, always consistently trying to find ways to learn. He accepts his mistakes, he holds himself accountable, and that's big for a young guy to be able to do that. The confidence he has within himself is amazing, and you see it when he goes out there and plays. He's always just ready for the big moment. Before anything offensively, he takes on challenges defensively." End quote. Against the Cavaliers, the shot-creating third-year guard out of North Carolina, Kobe White, was a game's second-best plus 15. He had 15 points, dished out three dimes, and snatched three steals. We can't forget about the productive outings from the bench, backup center Tony Bradley, the 3 and D wing Troy Brown Jr., and the sniper who used to play for my raps in Matt Thomas, all heavily contributed to a 13-point W over the hottest team in the NBA. But prayers to a speedy recovery to Lonzo Ball, who's out six to eight weeks, and Zach Levine, who's out for at least the next three games, things won't get any easier for Chicago, who take on the reigning champion Milwaukee Bucks in Cream City on Friday night. So will Chicago build off their win against the Hawk Cavs, or will they crumble due to the injuries of Zoe and Levine? Leave your take in the comments for a chance at next video shout out. Top five commenters with the most shout outs by March 21st receive NBA merchandise of their choosing this spring. So leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is Devin Sedotal, who says, I think the Warriors miss Clay's court gravity on offense the most. Clay's known to be one of the greatest shooters of all time. The Warriors run tons of sets for him off the ball, which draws defensive attention from one or sometimes multiple players. This helps space out the offense so much. Pause to read the rest of Devin's answer. I hope you have a great one. This was D-Flow, and I'll see you next video.